Make It Right, the manufacturing podcast. Willard Home Products is a family-owned business that started out in 1946 with a single product, mothballs. It now has almost 100 products, does business around the world, and operates five plants with locations in St. Louis and Philadelphia and three in Asia. They employ approximately 500 people. Willard manufactures everything from fly swatters and pest control products to air freshener products. They also make the toilet bowl cleaner Tidy Bowl, whose famous man in a boat commercials I remember from when I was a kid. Welcome to the Make It Right podcast. I'm Janet Eastman, and this week my guest is Derek Winters. He's VP of Sales for Willard Home Products, and I'm excited to have you on the show, Derek, because I haven't very often spoken to a family-owned business that's been family-owned for 75 years, so welcome to the show. Thanks, Janet. It's really good to be here. So I think Willard is an interesting company simply because of its longevity as a family-owned business. Can you give us a brief history lesson on how the company came to be and how it's grown? Yeah, no, I I think the the history is a really kind of interesting uh, kind of foundation where Mr. A.W. Willard uh, came back to the United States after serving uh, in World War II. So it's about 1946, he was working at Woolworths, uh, and the, he had a lot of customers coming in. You know, they're selling really nice garments, uh, jackets, you know, outerwear, and people kept having, you know, clothing damage from moths and other kind of insects in their closet. So, he, you know, after sitting there for a couple of years getting all these requests, he uh, came up with the idea to make a product called the Moth Master, which was a, a hanging device that used a, uh, an airborne uh, insect uh, product to to repel and get rid of uh, insects within your closet, and that's basically how Willard was born in 1946. Wow! And so, how long did they stick with that one product, or before they started branching out? Uh, they started branching out. I'd say probably a couple of years afterwards. So they, they really got into closet care. So added fragrance, added scents. Um, and then really started aggressively uh, growing kind of that segment of clothing care and moth uh, control into the 50s. Okay. So they, they acquired the Enos brand, which is the number one brand uh, from the Borden Chemical Company in the, in the mid-1950s. And today, Enos is probably the, the lion's share of, of outdoor and indoor clothing protection and insect control products, flying and crawling. Okay. Okay. So the company has basically grown from making their own products and acquiring other products to, I said that they had approximately a hundred products, but is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we were probably between a hundred and 200 uh, unique SKUs and unique products that are, yeah, I would say over 95% made by us. Uh, there's a couple things that we don't do in terms of like aerosols, but uh, everything else we're, we're a very vertically integrated manufacturing company. Okay, so that means that you handle all stages of the manufacturing process then, like right from design and development of a product for for those that are actually developed by the company right through to pushing it out the door to the consumer? Yeah, we uh, we do basically everything except for uh, corrugated boards. So we're even doing thermal form plastics, we're doing injection mold with, with uh, PET, uh, HDPE plastic, so injection, uh, extrusion blow molding. And then on the chemical side, we're doing our own blending, batching, um, continuous manufacturing at a chemical level, and then final packaging. So we've got uh, the capabilities of, of doing anything from a private brand product all the way to you know all of our national uh, brands that are sold worldwide. So, is that a unique approach? Like, I don't, I mean, I talk to manufacturers all the time, but I'm not actually in manufacturing myself. I've never worked in a plant, but is, is that unique where you actually make the physical product and then do all the packaging and everything? Uh, so I, I think for the, kind of the, the family owned nature and the size of our business, I think it's extremely unique. And, and I think it's a really, it's a testament to, to the Willard family and all of our associates that we're able to do this where, you know, we, we sit on the shelves alongside some of these, you know, iconic worldwide brands from Procter and Gamble and Reckitt Benkeiser and, and some great, great companies that, you know, they make a lot of their own products, but they also outsource a lot where we've, uh, we've really found kind of our, our competitive advantages is to really 
uh, make a lot of our own items and, and try to add value amongst the kind of the manufacturing process. So I do think we're fairly unique. I don't think uh, a lot of the other companies are doing as much works with plastics, as much work with chemicals and, and product development that we're doing today. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that the company's mandate has changed over the years, but what do you believe is your key focus right now? Yeah, so our, our key focus is, so we, we've got, uh, in, in, in your intro, you, you did a great job summarizing. So we're, we're kind of the leaders in uh, closet insect control and also flying and craw crawling insect, and that's a really important piece of the business. So we, we do that under the Enos brand. And then also another really, really kind of experienced legacy brand called Reefer Galler that was historically sold in Bloomingdale's, Macy's, and it's now in, in places like the container store and hardware stores. And then on our other side, uh, well, it's staying in closets. So to, to control insects in your closet, you can, you can do it numerous ways. Uh, you can use pest control products, but you also, uh, you know, eliminating odors and uh, moisture is also a big, big help in terms of uh, combating insect problems. So we have another brand that really focuses on odor and, and moisture control. It's called Air Boss. We do a great business with Air Boss amongst the hardware channel. Uh, in kind of the specialty channel retail, which is a TJX, so TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods amongst uh, the United States and Canada. So uh, one piece of our, our segment is really is driven towards in, insect control and closet care. Then the other portion of our business is all household cleaning, uh, mainly in toilet care. And that's our Tiny Bowl brand and Bowl Fresh brands and Dr. Flush. So those brands are really uh, made for automatic toilet bowl cleaning. So the goal of those products are really to, to help families, working families, save money and save time by just keeping automatic uh, cleaning within their household going. So dropping tablets, putting liquid in the back of your toilet is, is really a nice in-between cleaning and saves, you know, a lot of our hardworking families a lot of time and money. So that, that's kind of how we go to market in those kind of two segments. So how did you actually decide that those were the two areas that you wanted to own? Yeah, it, it kind of came by, uh, you, you, you know, you, you did, a, you did a, a nice job touching on the, the history and we started in the closet care with the Moth Master and, and Mr. A.W. Willard. Uh, our, our current president and chairman right now, uh, Bill Willard, A.W.'s son, uh, Bill acquired a company from a publicly traded Japanese company uh, many, many years ago that was the leading uh, automatic toilet bowl cl uh, cleaning company. So Think of blue tablets in the back of your toilet. Right. And uh, Bill started the Bullfresh brand and acquired this, this very, very large division of a Japanese company that we were able to start making products in the United States that we were exporting to Japan due to the quality kind of uh, uh, focus that we have. And we got into the, the automatic toilet bowl cleaning basically due to that acquisition uh, from that kind of subsidiary of a Japanese company. And, and from there we've grown where, uh, in 2010, we acquired the tidy bowl brand, uh, from another large CPG American CPG company. And we've, uh, now we have the fastest, the two fastest growing automatic toilet bowl cleaning brands, both mm -hmm. fresh and tidy bowl. So, so when, uh, Willard, the son, I, sorry, what was his first name? Uh, Bill Willard. Oh, Bill. Okay. So when Bill Willard, decided to go and acquire that company from Asia. Was that something that was pretty unique to do at that time? Because you say it was a number of years ago. Yeah, it was, it was a really interesting uh, kind of segment. So it was another, so it's a publicly traded Japanese company that was also family run. So we had a lot of commonalities in terms of, you know, family owned business, multi-generational and, and one of the uh, the sons nephews of the founders was basically sent to to New York City from Tokyo to run this this division and really take on the U.S. market. Well, when when they arrived here and after many years of trying this, he, they they realized that the U.S. market is, is is much different than Japan in terms of how the consumer behaves and all the also the competitive landscape. So, uh, Mr. Willard, Bill Willard, uh, our current chairman and president. Uh, befriended the family and, and over several years kind of worked out this this acquisition where it allowed us to kind of take their U.S. business and uh, then supply them in Japan and it's been a uh, probably about a 30-year relationship to this day. Huh wow okay so um, 
I want to talk about how you take costs out of the system because I think based on a conversation that we had prior to, to the podcast here, um, you had said that you, you like to do something called um, disruptive value. So explain what that is and how you approach taking costs out of the system when you actually are making and producing your product. Yeah, no, so uh, disruptive values is a term that many retailers have been kind of pushing, I'd say, for the last five to 10 years, but it's something that really fits our company well. So we do a good job, in my opinion, that of going into a category that's that's dominated by really large companies that has, you know, price points that are they're not inexpensive, and we try to make a product that has, you know, great quality that's available to the masses. So uh, we believe by vertically man- integrating all of our manufacturing, we're able to take a, a really, really good product and make it much more affordable. So an, an example I'll use is um, Scrubbing Bubbles has a great business in automatic toilet bowl cleaning, but to buy uh, their equivalent size is almost 60 to, to 80% more than ours. Hmm. So we believe that there's, there's a consumer that is looking for a, a great national brand product, but at a, uh, an opening level price point. And, and that's what we strive to achieve every day of winning customers and winning loyalty by, by supplying them something that's going to be, you know, uh, a substantially less price, but has an equal quality. Okay. So um, when you're up against a well-known brand like that, how do you actually gain that that customer loyalty to your brand and get them to actually buy your product? Do you know what I mean? That, like, yeah, like, no, it's. I mean, great, if everybody a, knows what scrubbing bubbles is, they go, "Well, I got to get that." How do you? How do you a, sort it, of? Yeah, go it's ahead. Great, it's a great question, and it's like one that we kick around a, a lot. So you know, you go after uh, when we're in with a big, big brand. Um, you know, Clorox is a phenomenal brand in our category. And, and all these, uh, these companies do a great job of branding and marketing. Our big uh, kind of component is when, you know, our, our core demographic shopper is, 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 a, is a working mom. And when, when that mom comes to the shelf, if she sees a product, for example, that's $5 and we have an equivalent in our mind product that's $3, we're totally trying to make uh, that consumer make the, sh- the shift at the shelf level. So we're trying to come with a package and, and a, you know, kind of a consumer value standpoint that's so far uh, superior that it, it really makes that person try our product and then hopefully we can gain that customer for life. And, and based on our, our, I'd say our last six, seven years of data, we've, we've done a good job of con- kind of converting customers to this, this, this style of, of approach that we're doing. Mm-hmm. So that comes down to the actual what is on the packaging of your products and you being able to get the, the appropriate shelf space in the store. So there's a lot of work involved in there for you to actually gain that customer. Yeah, no, there's a ton of work. And, uh, you know, and is it, that it, all it, in-house though? It, it, it is a lot of in-house. We do utilize uh, some really, really good package uh, designers Whereas, you know, our, our package is our billboard and uh, it's got to really jump out at a, at, a, at a shopper and it's got to resonate and communicate to them in, in, you know, in seconds. So that's one expertise that we, we aren't, uh, aren't, you know, top of mind in and we do outsource to some of the best, in my opinion, some of the best consumer package designers uh, around the country and in North America. So we aren't totally vertically integrated. We do have an in-house production department, but we do do some outsourcing in terms of design because there are some fantastic designers out there that are, are much more skilled in communication in, in seconds on a package than we are. Yeah, like you, you're the experts in the manufacturing and whatnot, but they're the experts in the design and, and the, the ad- advertising side of things. That makes perfect yeah. sense. So you guys actually um, manufacture private label products for Walgreens and Walmart. Um, this must have been a, a really competitive bid to win. I know somebody in the fishing industry who actually um, manufactures fishing lures and they sort of won this for Walmart and they were able to make products for Walmart, like the private label brand. So how, how hard is it to get this? Yeah, so there, there's, uh, you're exactly right. So private label is very, very tough. We work with uh, several uh, global global retailers and, and U.S.-based retailers. Um, 
and we we do and you do have to be extremely competitive where we've shown value in private label is where we've partnered with the retailer on something that i would call uh it's more of a unique offering that still has a, a tremendous value that a private land a private label is supposed to offer but it's kind of a unique value standpoint from an innovation standpoint so for an example we developed one with uh a national retailer where we utilize uh, a really unique shape and activated charcoal gel to absorb odors in the closet. So they're the only uh, retailer right now with a private label uh, closet charcoal odor eliminator that uses a gel-based formula. So it, the good thing for us is it allows us uh, to invest in research and development, but also it doesn't uh, kind of cannibalize the entire product line where it, it's just everybody battling over price, but the consumer still has a really, really good outcome on having a quality product at a great uh, cost. That's that's really smart because you're right. You're not cannibalizing your other products, right? That's, yeah. And yeah. It, it took it took us like ten years to learn this. So we we were the we were the down and dirty competitive bid company, and, and we still do that. But we've really thought about private label in, in two realms. How can we drive more shoppers to the to the shelf with that retailer with something unique, and then also our other kind of private label, you know, left brain, right brain, other right brain, just saying we got to produce at the very very best price and, and win the bid. Mm -hmm. How challenging is it to bring a new product to the market, and you know the other side of that too, bring a new product to the market, but then also figure out the manufacturing process and set that up in your plants. It, it, it's really, really hard. And it, it's something that's not a, uh, it's, it's more of an art and a science and just a science in, in, in our experience where, you know, we've launched some products where I thought uh, they were just going to be an absolute home run in terms of some uh, odor and moisture control products. But it, it turned out that the market wasn't nearly what we thought it was and the price points couldn't uh, support kind of the, the, the engineering of the products that we had. So one thing that the Willard family has done a really good job of is, as you mentioned, we have got uh, multiple manufacturing sites. Our sites in Asia really, uh, we can do mass production there as well, but they do a really good job of what we call like a pilot R&D program. So we're, they're really, really good at making, you know, 100 units, 1,000 units to get uh, certain retailers a test. So for example, there's some national retailers will do a test on a clip strip in 100 stores. And that'll really allow us to see like, hey, does this item make sense in, in this package at this price with this artwork? And it kind of takes uh, some risk out of the retailer and some risk out of, of full development for us. And we've really kind of pushed towards that kind of a pilot program. Mm -hmm. So you can actually test market things without it like breaking the bank on you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that's, I mean, don't get me wrong, we're, we're not making any money on it, but it's not one of these you got to spool up by all the equipment and, and hope it sells kind of kind of processes. We're able to, you know, make several hundred of, a, of an item and, and get some type of indication of if we think it's going to work well or not. Right. And then can you just gradually ramp up as you see the market demand for it grow? Yeah, absolutely. So our, our flexibility in manufacturing really allows us to do that. So our, our pilot plants over in Asia can then either scale up or we can then scale up to the U.S. to eliminate lead times where we've got some very, very automated equipment and, and, and a great labor force that helps us kind of spool up rather quickly. Mm -hmm. So are, are you selling most of your products in North America or are they global? Our products are global. So um, we, we kind of treat our business as, as two parts. So um, we do have an office in uh, Shanghai. Our office in Shanghai really sells to Asia, uh, Australia. So they, they have their own sales and marketing arm there. And then uh, our office in St. Louis mainly takes care of, of North America and South America. So we, we are a global company, but uh, we've got, I'd say uh, the majority of our business is still North America right now, but we are growing globally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when did you, I know that you, um... You purchased that other company some 30 years ago that was based in Japan. But when did you actually get the plants in Asia? Uh, we, the, uh, the, the Willard family, they, they moved uh, uh, Brian Willard, who's, who's now a uh, third generation uh, owner and operator, uh, the president of Willard Shanghai. Brian and his entire family moved over there with, with two small children. 
uh, about 15 years ago and he opened up our own, you know, it's our own plant. We own uh, the building you know, and uh, it's, it's a really interesting setup in terms of development and, and manufacturing. So we built our own factory from the ground up with uh, Brian Willard and his family uh, living in Shanghai for, for about 10 years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That, that's cool. It's, a, it's, yeah, we, we, uh, we, we take a, it's a pretty, uh, laser shot approach in terms of development from a manufacturing standpoint. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So a few years back, you say that, um, you bought Tidy Bowl and then you launched Tidy Bowl Natural. Now I kind of curious about what are some of the challenges manufacturing natural products and then, how do you manufacture them in a plant so they don't come into contact with other product ingredients that maybe can't be considered natural? Like what's the challenge there? Yeah, it's, it, you know, the natural segment is a, is a totally, uh, it's got a whole host of other, uh, you know, issues in terms of manufacturing that you brought up. So Tidy Bowl Natural was launched because uh, we saw a, a kind of a, in our opinion, a, a consumer demand for natural products, but every natural product that we were seeing on the shelf was six, seven, eight dollars. You know, there was hardly anything under five dollars when we launched Tidy Bowl Natural about six, seven years ago. So we partnered with uh, Albertsons and Safeway, uh, several divisions amongst kind of the Mountain West in the United States. So uh, we looked at really good consumer demographic data showing where this kind of where we thought this consumer demand was, and then we went out with you know products over three to five dollar retails. And uh, uh, it's, it's kind of been a, a really good evolution since. You, you bring up a good, also a good point, a good question, and how, how is natural defined and, how are, and, and is it hard to make natural? So when we started making natural products, the definition of natural and cleaning seven years ago is totally different than it was today. Mm -hmm. So previously, you, you were okay using uh, different ingredients that were derivatives of natural but now it's, it's much more stringent and we've actually had to kind of, uh, we didn't want to lose the efficacy of the current formulation. So we've, we've kind of transitioned our Tidy Bowl natural brand into Tidy Bowl uh, Botanical. So we're using, we're not 100% natural. We're not claiming 100% natural. So now we're botanical with, uh, we use a lot of really essential oils like tea tree oil. Uh, but it's really, a, it's demographic to be uh, as close to natural as it can be, but it's not 100% natural based on today's definition of natural. Seven years ago, it would have been defined as natural, but you know, things have changed in how it's defined. Yeah, well, and that is probably gonna constantly evolve, right? So <laughs> yeah, if you're in the natural business, you're gonna be constantly evolving to, to make sure your products stay in that category. That's, that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, and it, it kind of all, uh, it all started with the, the Honest Products and, and SLS where you know, you've got uh, a, a generational shift of, of, what, of chemists and scientists and regulatory folks where, you know, if, if you talk to somebody who might be, uh, and not trying to, to, to age bracket anybody, but if you talk to a scientist or many scientists that might be, have, you know, a longer tenure, they mm -hmm. have a different opinion of ingredients like SLS and, you know, than maybe a 35-year-old scientist. And that's just, and it's a subjective thing based on data points, but it's a really interesting kind of uh, meshing of, of generations of, of, uh, of workers right now. So we kind of got crossed in between. So we, we made the pivot and said, hey, we don't really, uh, our consumers care about natural, but they don't care about being 100% natural. They want a product that's affordable, that works, and that is mainly natural. And that's where we shifted to Tidy Bowl Botanical. And it's, it's one of the top uh, brands in kind of the specialty channel, which is TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross, Home Goods. Hmm. I have to ask this question because we are in the time of COVID, but um, was there any thought at any time coming up with hand sanitizers and anything like that for your product lines? Yeah, we, uh, we, we are in the hand sanitizer business. Oh. Uh, now we, our facility in Philadelphia had a, uh, a United States FDA uh, approval, and we actually made hand sanitizer in the 80s in, in this facility. So we basically just renewed our license and we started uh, supplying uh, mainly local and regional uh, grocery stores and hardware stores. Cool. So with the with COVID, let's let's go beyond that. Have you seen your business 
shift or change at all in the last, say, eight months with COVID? Are more people focused on cleaning and cleanliness? Like, have you noticed that in your business? Yeah, it was a, uh, it's a great question. And, and there's, there's kind of the pragmatic answer and then kind of the philosophical answer. And the pragmatic answer is yes, the, the awareness and cleaning just shot up. Uh-huh. And then, uh, you know, we, we sell most of our core businesses in is in bathroom and toilet care. So as soon as the work from home thing uh, kind of started, it's as simple as there's more people in their house flushing their toilets and, and you've got a lot more dirty toilets in your house. So our cleaning products in demand, you know, we're, we're seeing anywhere from two to three times demand at certain retailers. And, you know, being a family owned vertically integrated manufacturing company, we've never uh, shorted an order. We've fulfilled every single customer in full. And that's something that we're really proud of and continue to do so today. Wow. (laughs) Derek, I think I could probably talk to you for hours about this company, but um, I'm going to have to let you go. I'm sure you've got other things you want to get done today, but I think um, the Willard Home Products story is a fascinating one, and I wish you continued success, and I do hope that we have a chance to talk to you again in the very near future. I think it's a a really great story. Congratulations on the business. No, thanks, Jen. I really appreciate you having us on, and, and we're really thankful for all of our retail pus, uh, customers and all of our, uh, our consumers, and we appreciate you having us on. Thank you again. It's my pleasure. Derek Winters is VP of Sales for Willard Home Products, and that is our show this week. You can check out our Twitter and LinkedIn feeds that are on our podcast page, and subscribe and share the podcast with your friends and colleagues if you like through iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and YouTube. The Make It Right podcast is brought to you by Kevin Snook. He's a leadership advisor and author of the best-selling book, Make It Right, Five Steps to Align Your Manufacturing Business from the Front Line to the Bottom Line. Until next time, I'm Janet Eastman. Thanks for listening to the Make It Right podcast.